Chapter 15 Color is Energy and Energy Life With Tone the Emotion and Feeling the Voice A large crowd that gathered behind the Pinnacle Archives, a half mile from Zangthyr's house, awakened Warlock the next morning. Warlock proceeded to this meeting following the sound of Rezaeth's voice. Rezaeth was encouraging the crowd to persevere. As Rezaeth kept speaking, Warlock walked directly up to him, unnoticed, and stood in front of Rezaeth. What have you done to Zangthyr and my parents? Warlock insisted, wishing that Rezaeth could hear. Rezaeth spoke to the crowd, giving warning. Everyone listen. Hanani has discovered that the child returns. Warlock replied unheard. Rezaeth, here I stand. Deal with me as you are, and do not involve these townspeople. Each person in the crowd turned to one another in concern, and many whispered conversations erupted. Some asked, How does he know the child returns? Others questioned, Did he not say the child was dead? Rezaeth responded, The child was protected by Magistro. Be concerned for the young one has the knowledge of the Ejire and Kablu to harm each one of you. You must be ready to fight if he should return. The crowd grew concerned and responded, How can we stand against a child with that kind of knowledge? Hen and I then walked out of the crowd to join Rezaeth and address the crowd. The child now goes by the name Warlock. He desires to bring disaster upon us. Don't worry yourselves about him, because he is weak now that Magistro no longer lives. Also, do not be lax in your perception. Be ready, in case he should arrive. Hannah and I knew that Magistro still had power because of his expulsion from Urticon IV. Yet he desired to bring out the negative feelings within the crowd and produced fear in them. Warlock could sense that he had some ulterior motive for sparking the town's fury once again. Warlock desired to stay longer, to hear more of Rezaeth's threats. Yet he suddenly felt dizzy. Disorientation came over him like he had never felt before. He knew he needed to leave this place, as he had no control, and began to feel like it was taking him over, as it had Nesesica. Confused by how it all came about, he ran toward the valley cliff, trying to escape Nesesica with the feeling of disorientation becoming worse. Desperately, he tried climbing the cliff, by grabbing vines and roots, but his hand went through them like air. He decided to walk through the valley wall, but could only go one inch into the dirt before hitting solid material. The wall fell smooth, and he could not grab hold. The disorientation grew worse, and Warlock began feeling his own body become less dense. The feeling became painful as he cringed into a ball on the ground. Then... In an instant of clear thought, he asked the only question that was running through his mind, which he had begun to ask before meeting Han and I. Feelings and emotions that are commonly felt, what are they, and what is their purpose? Warlock suddenly found himself in a sunny Riddicon 4, noticing the familiar mountain to the north. The physical pain was no more, yet he knew he must hurry. After looking upon the mountain, a blast of blue light flashed across his vision. Warlock was quite intrigued as the light changed quickly through the many colors of the light spectrum. The light moved in a broad arc, back and forth every few seconds, in a continuous pattern. The beams of light now enveloped him, and their high intensity could be seen over the entire plane as they painted it with a rainbow of colors. The light reflected brightly back from the surface of his sparkling sentinel lake, and though it was intense, the colorful light did not hurt his eyes. Warlock ran toward the mountain as fast as he could. It seemed like the mountain was ten miles away, although the distance was of no real consequence in his world. As he ran, he noticed for the first time that he could float ever so slightly. 
He had no actual control of this new mystery, and so kept this floating to a minimum. It was intriguing. He crossed a broad plain of gold-colored rocks and dirt, and saw a few lone shrubberies sprinkled throughout the land. The animals did not follow but remained around his lake. After traveling for what seemed like twenty minutes, he approached the base of the purple-gray mountain. Even time was not absolute in this world. As he came within a hundred feet of the mountain, Warlock proceeded to float further off the ground, being careful not to lose control. He grabbed hold of the mountain and moved to climb up, with feet hovering horizontally behind him. This mountain was twenty thousand feet in height, and he scaled it with minimal effort in what seemed like ten minutes. As he approached the summit of the mountain, a silvery tube outside the mouth of a cave, the source of the rainbow of colors in the plain, appeared. As Warlock climbed over the ledge and onto level ground, he heard a barely audible hum emanate from the tube, and a sizable cube-like object rested behind it. As Warlock approached, he could hear that the hum was not continuous and smooth, but rather a series of pulsing sounds. In this world, all his senses were heightened, which enabled him to hear and see things that would go unnoticed by someone in the physical world. Even Warlock himself would not have noticed the pulsing sounds in the physical world, for they were so faint. Yet Riddicon 4 and Sentinel Lake provided him with heightened senses. He focused more on the sound and realized that time between individual pulses of sound began to lengthen. It continued until ten seconds elapsed between each pulse of sound, which in themselves only lasted a half a second for each. Then he noticed that the light itself was pulsing at a slower rate and not as continuously as he had first seen. The change in speed was slight in its variance and was difficult to discern. Warlock then concentrated on the light and gradually influenced it to shorter and shorter amounts of time until the pulses of light would have only been able to travel a very short distance before the next pulse occurred. He watched intently and determined that over a million pulses came every second. With his heightened sight, he could see the changing color between each pulse, distinguishing a thousand times more than an ordinary man could perceive. Then he slowed the rhythm down yet again until five minutes passed between each pulse. During the instance where no light was emanating from the tube, Warlock climbed inside of it. There was a golden plaque containing writing that was firmly attached to the inside of the tube, and the plate began to glow with a bluish tint, which slowly increased in brightness. Warlock crawled back out and moved to the side of the tube, just as a bright pulse of light sprouted. Warlock yet again climbed into the tube, and having time slowed down to almost a total standstill, he had plenty of time to read the words inscribed on the plaque. He left the light slightly blue to give him enough light by which to read. By the faint blue light that he allowed to emanate from the tube, he read a most interesting message. It is of natural being, all and throughout the world, and even into your very dreams, light has value concerning this being, a constant interaction Light yields valuable results, the answer for which you ask, are hidden within the substance of this nature. To discover your answer, explore within yourself, and ask yourself how you will begin to learn. The secrets hidden within every part of this substance, and it shall be unraveled with the power you possess. After Warlock read the message, he climbed out. He was unsure of the message's meaning and how it pertained to his present situation. Since it speaks of the present, it must speak of the power I now possess. Is it a set of instructions? It does not provide much in a way of explanations. The power is the light, but what is the substance? What is of natural being and all and throughout the world? Warlock paced pondering the message in the tube, and he stopped to look into the damp cave. There was a small pool containing crystal clear water. It was a cool cave and interestingly very humid at the same time. Ah, 
Now I see. I must combine the light and the water. He grasped the side of the tube and proceeded to turn it to face the cave. Once it was oriented correctly, he waited for a pulse. A light blue-colored pulse shot out and the entire cave filled with a brilliant light that slightly irritated his Riddicon four eyes. Nothing seemed to happen right away, so Warlock sped up time until two pulses filled the cave each second. Warlock heard a roaring coming from within the cave which echoed throughout Riddicon 4. Interested, Warlock returned time to its regular rate in the cave filled with a bright white-hot light. The heat soon became unbearable, so Warlock floated rapidly down the mountainside back to his lake. Every note imaginable came from the mountain and resonated louder and louder. The light grew brighter until Warlock had to turn away. He jumped in the lake, submerged himself, and washed a light through the water. He heard each note pound the surface of the water, making distinct rings he could clearly see. Each ring reflected the light in different ways and patterns of color floated throughout the lake. It was beautiful. The low notes resonated much like a giant stone cast into the water. The high notes continued beyond his acute hearing range. There was then a startling moment of silence. He could not see the light either, for it was now beyond his visible scope. Warlock then heard what sounded like intense thunder. The rumbling grew louder, and the surface of the water shook. Many individual peaks appeared across the water's surface. The pool lit up and glowed dark red. The pitch of sound became higher and mixed with the lower frequencies into an audible noise. Warlock felt the need to consume more air, and he rose reluctantly to the surface and took a deep breath while still looking at the bright lights that covered the lake's surface. His skin burned slightly when he broke the surface, which made him retreat quickly back under the water to safety. Not wanting to rise again, he stayed under for a much longer time. He then realized he didn't need to breathe and remained comfortably underwater. The audible sounds became more distinct and changed into intelligible words. They were words of low and high-pitched voices, which increased in volume until they were almost too loud to tolerate, even with the sound muffled by the water. Then they quieted down dramatically, but remained slightly audible. These very words answered his question about the substance mentioned in the message. They would give way to his question on feeling. Warlock listened intently to the words that alternated in pitch with each sentence. Color is voice and tone, vibrancy expressed when the sound comes forth. Feelings are shown through that which occurs in power. The energy of the light in each hue surrounds each emotion. Speak with your chosen color, a word that is unique and that color will be your own. What you see is what you hear. The colors of the world define their existence. Learn them well, for you will use them indefinitely to create a new hue of your own. There was a pause, and then Warlock felt a surge of heat pass through his Riddicon for body. Moments later, the mountain exploded with such violence that it was entirely turned to energy. The water in Sentinel Lake vaporized instantaneously, and Warlock bounced slightly left exposed in the bare depression. A mist of warm water was formed, and this cloud of human air blocked the surrounding light, and so Warlock now sat in a misty dark world. He called on the Gamosphere to bring him light, and in answer to his question about feeling, spoke the words he had learned. Color is energy and energy life, with tone, the emotion, and feeling the voice. In the moments that followed, Warlock saw the steerings of lightning within the clouds of his misty dark world. At each flash of soft white light, a rumble erupted, growing progressively louder. It did not become uncomfortable, but Warlock continued to look around him as the whole dark world seemed to rumble with this thunder of sorts every few seconds. The thunder was far different from the tones he heard from the power and seemed to form some kind of pattern in its expression, with each flash of white light. 
Warlock felt this manifestation would become words, but the thunder still remained unintelligible. Warlock remembered the fate his physical body faced, being trapped in the pain of a strange necessica, and was desperate to hurry. Yet now, understanding the importance of emotions, he remained calm. As the thunder continued, he still had no idea of its meaning. Then, he repeated what he learned and what he felt had started to rumble. Color is energy and energy life, with tone the emotion and feeling the voice. For an instant, Warlock thought he understood the rumble's words. Warlock speaks my name. The rumble continued as Warlock pondered on these words, as the thunder became unintelligible again. Again, he spoke what he learned, emphasizing the name as if to call it. Color is energy, and energy life, with tone the emotion, and feeling the voice. The lightning and thunder became more regular and covered more of his world until Warlock was surrounded by soft white light. The light blocked out that of his gamosphere, making it unseen. The rumble of the thunder became less pronounced, becoming faint in the background. The words of his world became clear, the most peaceful yet powerful he had ever heard. Warlock splits Riddicon 4 Revealing Riddicon 5 Warlock tried to think about what was said, but could not, as this new world, Riddicon 5, with soft white light, encompassed his entire thoughts. Thus thoughts in themselves did not exist without being unified throughout this realm. Warlock dared not think of asking this speaker who or what it was. As Warlock could not speak in Riddicon 5, he listened as the speaker gave its words of instruction, one point at a time. Warlock is endowed with his hidden name, the key that brings Quemson peace. Warlock did not feel like he knew his name. The words Warlock speaks of color and life hold true in form of what Warlock now receives. Warlock was confused but could not think because of the ubiquitous nature of Riddicon 5. Warlock knows I am the voice, the essence of emotion that sparks the existence of the power. Warlock worried about his physical body, but was captivated by the voice and its message. Within my voice, all things that were and will be are. Warlock was unable to think about Necessica, due to the rapture he felt in the presence of the voice. Warlock sees that Rezaeth shifts the dimension of Nocesica. Even Rezaeth could not enable Warlock to think in Riddicon 5 if he wanted to. Warlock knows that Rezaeth drops Nocesica into Warlock's Riddicon negative 2. Somewhere in the faintest part of Warlock's conscience, outside of reach was a remembrance of Xanthir overlit by Riddicon 5. Warlock's friend Xanthir dies in Warlock's Riddicon negative 1. Warlock could not cry, for Riddicon 5 was the source of emotion, and all feelings were one. Rezaeth uses Xanthir's bond with Warlock to reach Warlock's Riddicon negative 2. Warlock still had no idea of how to reach Riddicon negative 1 or Riddicon negative 2. Warlock Riddicon negative one gives power to the words of Kablu. Warlock could only accept this knowledge openly without judgment. In his Riddicon five, things were neither good nor bad. They just were. Within a few moments, as best as Warlock could tell, the ambient lightning began fading, and he felt the pull of Riddicon four. When all was a dark mist, lit only by his gamosphere, Warlock spoke the words he had learned. Emotions are powerful, and feelings are fierce. This is the spark of the voice. In that instant after his words, the mist cleared from Riddicon 4 and the water settled back into Sentinel Lake. Then, his globe and gamma sphere reappeared, and along with them a new clear prism-shaped form, which sparkled colorfully, in the light of his Riddicon 4 sun. 
Immediately, he was back in Quemzon, feeling the pain of Nesesica's phenomenon of a shifted dimension. For now, he needed to get away, and could only hope the globe would lead him to safety. Calling on the globe by way of the Gamosphere, he departed Nesesica, where he was lost for a remedy.